Now we know what the general journal is, let's look at how to record transactions in it. So we had been using these transaction tables, so where we said here's a transaction and we think of the accounts that are affected, in this case it was a payment for rent plus GST, so in this case we'd have an expense going up, which was a debit, we'd have GST clearing, which is a liability going down, and that was a debit, and then we'd have cash, which is an asset going down, and that's a credit. And then we would just make sure that when we put these to the ledgers, we made sure that we would just copy what we did here. We do rent was a debit, GST clearing was a debit, and lastly cash was a credit. Well, we're going to keep this bit with the references. So the rent and the GST clearing would say cash, and cash would say rent slash GST clearing, and we're going to keep that. We're going to keep these ledgers. What we're going to do is change this bit. We're going to do something very similar, but it's not this transaction table. However, the knowledge we need is from these transaction tables. So what we're going to do is use the general journal. So in this case, we take the date, we go to rent, and we just need to figure out there is no column saying up or down here, and there is no classification column. So what I do is I write in brackets what the account is, which is E for expense. Now you don't need to do that. That's completely optional. What you do need to write is the name of the account. And in this case, it's rent. It's an expense and it would be going up. So that means that would be a debit. We've got GST clearing, which I've written alpha liabilities, but again, you don't need to do that. But because I'm paying GST, that liability will go down and that would be a debit. And lastly, cash is an asset. And because I'm paying cash, that's a credit. And that means it's going down. So that would go there. And what's different with the general journal is we put in this narration, a description of the transaction, paid monthly rent, and the source document, check one, two, three. And then we post this to the, uh, the ledger accounts, which in this case was rent, GST clearing, and cash. And this bit will be the same. We'll go to rent and do a debit. We'll go to GST clearing and do a debit. And then we'll go to cash and do a credit. And our referencing will be the same as last time. So in rent and GST clearing, we'll write cash. And in cash, we'll write rent slash GST clearing. So that part was the same. What was different was we recorded it before that in the general journal. So what we want to do is just make sure that we've got some four sort of bits of information every time. So we've got the date, the date the transaction occurred, that goes in this first column. Now even though my transaction went over three lines, I just wrote it on the first line. You don't need to write it in the second and third line. So just once is fine. Then we write the name of the accounts. So first thing to remember is I'm just writing the name of the account, which in this case would be rent. We don't need to write this little E in brackets for expense or the alpha liabilities and so on. That's just something that I do. You might like to do it too. But all we really need is the name of each ledger account affected by the transaction. And the rules of double entry accounting say that at least two accounts will always be affected. The next thing we need is whether it's a debit or a credit. So we've got a column for the debits, and a column for the credits, and we're just plonking the numbers in there to make sure our debits equal our credits. Um, just another thing is with the credits, I always do an indent. You can see cash is indented because it's a credit. You don't need to do that either. You can just put cash up against here, and you don't need to do the debits before the credits. I just always do that because that's the way I was taught, and it's how I remember. But you can do it in whatever order you want. The credits can go first. What is probably most important with the general journal is that we have this thing called a narration. And that's a description of the transaction that occurred. And it's better to put too much information. So you want to put in things like what happened, paid monthly rent, quantity. So for other transactions, we might sell some inventory. So we might say sold 17 units of inventory. And most importantly, the source document number, which in this case was check one, two, three. And the reason why we're doing all this is because then it helps uh, support faithful representation and verifiability because the business has evidence of each transaction and can use the source document number to locate the actual document in the accounting system if needed. And by doing this, we ensure that all the transactions are recorded correctly and in full. So what we're doing is we're saying we're recording things in the general journal. And basically what we're doing is we're enforcing the rules of double entry accounting, which are these. Every transaction will affect at least two items in the accounting equation. The accounting equation or balance sheet must always balance after every transaction. And lastly, the total debits entered must equal the total credits for every transaction. Let's look at the one we did just to prove that's true. Here's what we're recorded in our general journal. Here's our rules. Rule one. Every transaction will affect at least two items in the accounting equation or balance sheet. There we go, we've got three items, so we're good. So the second thing, the accounting equation or balance sheet must always balance after every transaction. So in this case, we had rent, which is an expense. So that would decrease owner's equity 4,000. 
we had a liability called GST clearing going down 400 because it was a debit. And lastly, we had cash was an asset and that was a credit of 4,400. So that was an asset going down. So if we balance that out, cash went down 4,400. Liabilities went down 400. And owner's equity went down 4,000. So that balances negative 4,400 equals negative 400 plus negative 4,000. So that's good. And lastly, we just always want to check that our total debits entered must equal the total credits for every transaction. And in this case, we had total debits of 4,400 and total credits of 4,400. The important thing here to realize is that it can be split over multiple lines. So here we've got 4,400, that equals 4,400. But on the credit side, we've only got one entry and that's okay. All we're looking to do is to make sure that the total debits entered equal the total credits for every transaction.